always the issue comes through, and it's still true. It was 30 years ago, and it's still true today. You know, I'm, I'd like to move my account, but I don't know how to tell my old advisor I'm leaving him. Yep. And that is one of the biggest hurdles. And I mean, I've seen an example as recent as the other day. A fella came to see me, was referred to me by uh, a, a tax attorney, was paying enormous fees. Had a nice size account, 500000 Was paying almost 3% in management fees, $15,000 a year. Was The advisor was acting and not was not registered to serve in his jurisdiction, uh, was using the address mm -hmm. issue, um, was presented with a case where, he'd, where of course, we could, we could supply the service. The investment performance was as good or better for half the fee, having everything legit, mm -hmm. a wider array of investment options, and he said, okay, I th I'll, I'll go with it. He'd give me the forms. I'll take them with me. And then goes and gets, I guess, visits his broker and gets talked into staying mm -hmm. the last minute and then phones me up uh, three weeks later and says, Gee, gosh, I, uh, I guess I'm going to stay. I mean, I know it's not the right thing, but, you know, I, I kind of like this guy and, you know, he's kind of be good to me. I mean, we, we, did, we did make a lot of, you know, my, when the market was good, we made money. Yeah, it went down last year, but not his fault, so I don't, I don't want to really abandon him. Um, but I put the question to him. I said, so, as he told me, he says, um, he's not allowed to speak to the individual advisor because he's not licensed. He's referred to somebody in Toronto who he has to talk to who has kind of some U.S. responsibilities. But I guess the advisor still gets paid a part of this fee that he pays, so I, well, I don't know what service the actual advisor is providing to him because he can't advise him so it's a pretty expensive friendship it's one of these things right? that people I mean, do and it's or their mother deals with that broker so yeah. they want to deal with that broker they don't even necessarily want to but if they don't their mother will get mad at them well there's that but i think a lot of it is a relationship based issue it's it's emotion and it comes down to trust it's a trusting the devil you know than the devil you don't yeah. and to take the time to get to know somebody new and build the trust how do you do that well, without, you have to without just, taking a perceived risk? You have to just keep on pushing and putting yourself out there and saying, this is what I do, and being there when they finally realize that they need your services. Well, I think that's the issue, and that's the way we try and approach it. Basically, you know, you don't have to do business with us. You can have a look at us, check us out, keep in touch. When an issue comes up, and it, it will, because it, we know it will, then you know who to call. Yeah. Um, my guest has been Dan Walkel. He's with Seabank Capital, and it's www.seabankcapital, S-E-A-B-A-N-K-C-A-P-I-T-A-L.com. Office in White Rock. You're on what, 152nd? 152nd and 20th. 152nd and 20th. You can't, it's easy to get to. Good parking, cool restaurant downstairs. Nice one across the street, too. There's yeah, we've got lots a new places. sushi place actually across the street now, too. Have you got a new sushi place? Yeah, we've got lots of I'm going to go have to Come down, we'll have sushi. I'm going to have to go out and have some sushi with you. Maybe I'll take the shower scar. I'll put the sign like and the red light on. I like and it. We'll move, move through traffic. I like but uh, if you have a cross-border investment problem, you've heard us talking about what people can't do and shouldn't do. And it's my experience that, oh, I don't know, one out of three anyway, one out of four of the clients who come to me for tax are operating uh, or dealing with a broker or an investment advisor or somebody in, a, in what is truly an illegal setup under the securities branch of the United States or the province of BC or Alberta or something. Because if you move from Alberta and you got this guy that you've been dealing with and now you're living in BC, unless he's gone to the effort of getting himself licensed in BC, he can't deal with you, not legally. If you want to avoid problems, get it straightened out. And uh, Dan Walko is one of the people. I've been doing this for 46 years. He's one of the three or four people over the years that I have found that's gone to the effort to license himself in the States and license himself in a couple of provinces in Canada. And he can deal with an IRA across border or RSP across border or one of each or a KEO or a pension plan or your ordinary cash account, your stock brokerage account. Dan Walker, phone number is 604, or actually we should be 866, eh? 
Yeah, one eight six six five four one nine nine five two for the toll free North America. Yeah. And if you're in town, it's six zero four five four one nine nine five two. Got the same phone number, different area code. Perfect. Love it. Thank you, Dan, for coming in, and this has been Ingram. Hey, David.